Hello, everybody. My name is Angie Peacock. I'm a psychiatric drug withdrawal consultant and a healing coach. And today I have the pleasure of bringing you Geraldine Burns, who I call the matriarch of the benzo recovery <laughs> movement, <laughs> because she's like the one who started the first benzo group online. And she helped create the Ashton Manual and bring it to life and still mails out copies today. So I'm really excited to bring you her story, her experiences over the last 25 years, watching people recover. And she's also in the film as prescribed. I'm in the film Medicaid Normal. So we're like film sisters. <laughs> so yeah. we have a lot to talk about, Geraldine. Just say hello to everyone. All right. Hi, everybody. And welcome. Glad everybody can come on and hear Angie and I, because we are troopers with all this. We've certainly been through a lot. And we actually got yeah. to meet each other at one point. Yes, I forgot to say that. I went to Geraldine's house for dinner and it was the coolest dinner ever because she could, what, what is it, tabulae? What did you make? Uh, oh, tabbouleh. Tabbouleh? So, <laughs> Lebanese had chicken tacos. We had, yeah, we did. We did. That was out of the Simply Keto book. We kind of, I had an array of food because I wasn't sure what everybody would eat. Yeah. And Sonia, I mean, I just love sending everything home with Sonia. She's like, I'm like, take it all. Here we go. <laughs> it was the best dinner. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah we and, we came, and we came in town for the Massachusetts bill, which we'll get into because I want to hear yeah. about the updates yeah. on that. So let's just start from the beginning for people that maybe don't know you. Like, take us through how did you end up on a benzo? How did you get off? And what was your healing process like? Okay. So how I wound up on a benzo is in 1988 when I delivered my daughter I went all natural, not by choice. It was just happening fast. And at the time, I don't know it, but I had an, an infection set in. And in the hospital, I say, I don't feel well. I feel like I weigh a thousand pounds. I could tell something was wrong. So right in the hospital, I'm given out of it. I do take one. I don't want to take a pill, but I go home. And so that's in March by August. So all this time I'm calling my doctor, like something is wrong. They think, well, do you have a fever? You know, that kind, do you have a fever? No, I don't have a fever. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, well, you're going to have to go see a psychiatrist, but I'm like, you're depressed. I'm like, I'm not depressed. I actually feel that something's wrong inside. I can, I can tell you at the time I was 105 pounds. I had two very tough pregnancies. I'm 105. And I feel like I, I weigh a thousand pounds and you take care of two kids and you don't feel well. So by August, I give in, I go to a psychiatrist and she tells me to start taking out of it and then she'll figure out what I need. I go, well, wouldn't you want to do a blood test? Like if I'm missing something, oh no, we don't do that. You know, it really is a strange practice, you yeah, know? <laughs> so she convinces me to take the out of it and I do. And when I think about young mothers driving on these drugs, so immediately I'm not doing well. I mean, I have to say it would give you a little bit of relief because I don't feel well, but I got two kids and, um, and you got to function. So, you know, that starts the journey. And then she's, I think the first drug she gave me was a I mean, it was 10 years of drugging. Now all along, I notice right away, my periods start changing. So, you know, I'm big into the whole menstrual yes. period. Mm -hmm. I had perfect periods my whole life. If I had a cramp once in a blue moon, that would be strange. I had perfect periods. I noticed that they're changing. I am now fully bleeding five days, seven days, nine days. This is over the time. But in 1992, I believe, a friend sent me to a holistic nutritionist. At the time, I'm on Elevil and Ativan. And mind you, the, it's going up, but she's trying me on every drug out there. I have my whole thing that I had for my lawsuit that I trotted everything out. And um, thank God I reacted to all of them. And in 1992, I go to a holistic nutritionist that a friend tells me to go. He changes my diet. I don't even, he doesn't tell me because he's a nutritionist that I'm sick from the drugs. I do the diet and he, very minimal supplementation. And I'm actually, I get off the elbow. I'm all the way down to a half a milligram of Ativan. I don't have withdrawal. I don't even, I couldn't even tell you how I was tapering. He's wow. got me feeling so good. I'm actually going back to work part-time. I worked in human resources in an 800 bed Harvard facility uh, in Boston. And um, I'm actually going back to work. I'm like, oh, I'm getting my life back. This is awesome. Seven months go by. I'm doing this diet where all the junk is out. There's no dairy, no sugar, nothing with yeast. Um, and I go to the doctor, all the drug weight's gone. I can tell you, I remember I weighed 111 pounds because prior to getting pregnant, I was always 110. And I'm like, I can't just lose that last pound. This psychiatrist says, diet and nutrition have nothing to do with your health. And I said, so I can have sugar again? Absolutely. And I always say I sold my soul for sugar. 
back up on the Ativan. I went more drugs. And, and then by the time I'm 41, I am bleeding three weeks out of the month and I have a hysterectomy. And I asked the doctor what was wrong. And he said, your uterus was in perfect condition. How, oh, how am I yeah. bleeding so much? So anyway, I meet my new gynecologist six months later. And I say the same line. I say to her, that every doctor I went to here in Boston, I take this Ativan. They all said harmless, not addictive. We give it to our elderly. I mean, you know, I saw endocrinologists, guy, oh, yeah. you know, uh, cardiologists, gastroenterologists chasing the mysterious illness. Because she turns around and says, you are on one of the most addictive drugs ever made. And you know, she apologizes and she writes a thing for me to come off in two weeks. And I knew that would kill me. So I leave her office and I'm looking for information. This is back in like 1996, 97. There's mm-hmm. no information. I find one little book and I think, all right, so I'll, if she tells me to come off in two weeks, I come off of three milligrams of Ativan in four months. I mean, it hurt, but I did it. And, I, and yeah. in this little book that I found, it said, you could suffer for a year. I'm like, I'll take a year. So um, by five months off the drugs, because they came off so fast, I was actually looking to go back to work. And that's when all hell breaks loose. It's like hell opened up and swallowed me. And as we know, when you come off fast like that, the stored benzos, that's when, as Dr. Pert would say, like the stored benzos have left. And it was horrific. I think I lost 20 pounds in 23 days. I can't function. I can barely breathe. And I finally, I've got to take my daughter to the doctor. I take a quarter of a half milligram of Ativan. I put it in my mouth. Everything feels perfect again. I just wish I understood at the time, but I would have, to be honest, I always say I would have gone back on, got myself healthy and then tapered. Because when you think after almost 10 years, you're not healthy, you're a mess. And I did try to go back to that nutritious, but he had no appointments at the time. So I think over the period of the next year, I, I'm struggling. I'm barely functioning. I think too many times I put a piece in my mouth because I don't know. And then I, we start looking for people online. So that's when my son helps me. He's like, you have to find others like yourself. Well, the internet had just come into the house. Oh, no, no, you don't ever talk to somebody online. Strangers. And yeah. Garrett finds Garrett find CETA, Pam Armstrong's Council for Involuntary Tranquilized Addiction. And I call them. And that's the start of oh my gosh, you know, and we get information and I go back to my doctor to show her this information. She looks at it, hands it back to me and uh, hands me a prescription for Ativan and tells me to go back on for the rest of my life. I knew that minute I would sue her. Like I am sicker than I'll probably ever be in my life. And you're telling me to go back on a drug that this is, I can't have any more children because of you. And you listen to me when I'm telling you, it's, you know, I'm, as sick as I was, my brain was semi-working because there are times I couldn't remember my husband's name or I couldn't remember phone numbers, but it's like, I just brought you information. And so she, I, I remember in my final notes, when I asked for my notes, she put, said, I have a belief in internet sites. There weren't even a lot <laughs> back then. Oh, it was just God. a couple. And I brought her, um, oh, what was his name? He wrote the book, Benzo something. Um, Are you talking about, uh, Will, what is his name? Will? Um, Dr. Drummond. Oh, no. Oh, okay, Will, yeah, yeah. Day was around years ago. Like you're yeah. talking all the ones like so I was in touch with years ago. So when I call CETA, they put me in touch with Reg Pert. Reg puts me in touch with Heather Ashton. You know, again, this is 25 years ago. We have nothing in America. There's nothing. And I'm looking for information and I'm horrified that I don't drink, I don't smoke. I did everything the way you're supposed to do it in life, you know, and and it just got blown up. You know, I got taken out of the workforce and mm-hmm. you're not the mother you want to be. Cause you're this crazy person in the house of like, oh, no, I can't, I can't drive. What? It's mm-hmm. like, what is it with all of us that we can't drive? You know? I don't get, I don't oh, know. I think it's simulation. It's too much moving and too much movement, oh, oh, too yeah. much information. It had me in a car. I mean, Joe would, be, Joe would be like, what are you seeing? I'm like, I, you know, it could be a, a branch going by, but it's like, I was like a little China doll yeah. and your kids are seeing you in this horrific state of fear. Don't leave me. You know, because I had terrible agoraphobia and monophobia. I never mm-hmm. even heard the word, word agoraphobia. I mean, I know, right? So I think because I worked in human resources, it was like, this is a criminal thing that just happened. I'm not taking this laying down. Uh, so I start collecting information literally from all over the world. So there was a judge in South Africa, got in touch with him. I got permission to use his story. I mean, he almost lost everything for mm-hmm. Adivan. 
And so the book that I was doing was called um, Minor Tranquilizes Major Problems, because it is, they wow. call, oh, these are minor. No, major problems disease, an international effort to tell the truth about tranquilizers and sleeping pills. But as, as I'm collecting from Australia and New Zealand and Sweden and all these places, and Heather Ashton is, is yes, she'll contribute. That comes to three chapters, which were mind blowing. That okay, now we've got something. I, I wanted multiple doctors to validate. Hers was just perfect within itself. We had something to start validating. So initially, we were printing them and mailing them from here, and you know, we just weren't that set up. And then one of the doctors. Um, you know, back then said, you, you need to work smarter. You know, do you know all the people that wrote all the other books? I'm like, yeah, I know all of them. These are all the books that have been, you know, The Accidental, yeah. uh, The Judas Window, um, Benzo Junkie, all, they all gave permission. And then came wow. a summer of, you know, scanning their books and getting that done. And then we go, you know, Ron teaches me how to do everything because we all know I'm bad with computers and everything goes online. So from anywhere in the world, you can order any one of the books. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I think with all of us, the reason we do this, too late for us, we don't want to see it happen to anybody else. Well, and I hear a thread of this. I've never noticed this about you, Geraldine, but you have that same thing that I do where it's like, I can't just walk away. Like, I just you can't. can't. Like, right. I'm mad. And how dare you do this to me? And you're doing this to all these other people. I mean, even when it happened to me and I started finding all these things like Ada versus Ada of it. Ada, Ada versus Ada Adavan from the UK, yeah. that little, yeah. that little, uh, I forgot the name of it, but it was a little TV yeah. show on I, YouTube. When I found yeah. that, I was like, are you kidding me? This has been going on for 40 years and nobody's tried to stop it. Are you it's, kidding me? Uh, I don't understand. He tried 10 Kennedy tried. I mean, look at, they just came. I saw that. Yeah. They just come right in and it's, yeah. it's just, it's ridiculous. And, and so now yeah. I wanted to do legislation. But I was very sick back then. And so now as Garrett goes to law school, now he starts working for Representative McMurtry and I'm getting stronger and better. It's like, OK, let's sit down. What do you want? And I knew from what happened in the UK and I was very cautious to have people like, why aren't you getting things put in the, in your, the Boston Globe or here and there? Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't call the Boston Globe. They're like, well, we did an article years ago. Wasn't that enough? No, because it's no, still going on. Still going on. Yeah. You have to be careful because what happened in the UK years ago, when I first called over there, doctors start to get nervous. And what do they do? They start cutting people off. And we see that more and more right now. To me, that's another crime. If you cut okay. somebody off, I would, honestly, I would have a lawyer right there. Like you put somebody on it, they should not be coming off cold turkey. It yep. warns in the literature. I mean, it's just a, a more harm to the harm you've already yeah. done to people. Yeah. So I had said to Garrett, if we're going to do this, if we're going to write this bill, it has to be protected. Like I would walk away from this if they start cutting people off. Because yeah. if somebody doesn't want to come off, that's their choice. You already did it to them. You don't know yeah. what their life circumstance is. We need to protect them. We need doctors understanding. We want slow, you know, you know, everything that's in the bill yes. that we want. Yeah. We want slow taper, you know, short-term reason, short-term prescription, symptom-guided tapers, um, you know, and, and long-term people are to be protected. No one should be forced off, yes, you know? Absolutely. So what was that first Yahoo support group like? That very first Benzo support group? Oh, that's got... interesting. I think there were 24 of us that have found each other online. And we thought, ooh, it, you know, what if we get, oh, we're at 100 now. And then, it, I mean, it was going fast, 200, 300, 400, 1,000. And they're coming in from all over the world. Um, so there was so much information. I mean, we really had great information in that group. And as you know, there can be one of the things we were warned about, just so, so I could tell you, I'm sure you know this. Yes. The drug companies and whatnot um, will threaten, they'll come in as other people, they'll do certain things. And I thought, no, that yeah, everybody was pretty polite. You didn't really see a lot of that initially. Then you start seeing it. So eventually, as the group grew and grew and grew, and then uh, one of the doctors said, look, you need to work smarter. You need to go bigger. So I give the group uh, over to somebody else. And now we start doing the Benzo book review. Everything was go bigger. You're not going big enough. Go bigger, bigger, bigger. So we go bigger to the Benzo book review project so we could start getting the manuals and the other books out there to people. Then it was legislation or, you know, go on radio shows back then. It was kind of slowly happening. But so... I never wanted to believe that somebody would actually come in and destroy it. And somebody did come in and destroy the group. And the person I gave my group to 
had become a nurse. She was one type of nurse and became another. And she's like, I can't have my license threatened. And I'm like, but all that information. And then, so the whole group was dissolved. And then, you know, Colin, Colin had started Benzo Buddies. Facebook hadn't gotten big yet then, but other people were starting groups. So, you know, that broke my heart to see it go and have all that wonderful information go because we really, and people that we lost touch with or. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was dissolved and um, yeah. Well, that's be- fascinating. Yeah. You, so, well, now, I mean, we're going to get into this probably just like the negativity in some of the groups. It's a double-edged sword, you know, I, you were talking about this on another. Yeah. Let's just go there now. But I did a video called toxic negativity because it was almost like everybody is terrified and they're in yeah. the fight for their life. They're at yeah. the bottom of their, like their an atom bomb just was dropped on their life. But you have this like scared brain and you're super vulnerable to, to suggestion and you're looking for answers and you're trying to figure out what happened to you. I did it too. And then when I would start to read the scariest stories or the scariest, the people with the worst symptoms or something, I knew I was one of them. And I was like, I can't read this. I can't, I can't afford to. So yeah. I know I like you were mentioning about girls that were saying they had black brain and we were thinking, but, but what if that just means like emotional anesthesia or what if that means like your executive function is off, but there's a new word for it. And then when people right. hear that, oh my God, I must have black brain. What does I that must, mean? My brain right, is dying. Right. right. Well, I didn't even know years ago, air hunger. So I didn't know what to call it. Right. Cause this is 25 years ago. Then if you hear air hunger, Oh, that's what I had, you know? So words are coming out for what we're feeling that I, I mm-hmm. here's, here's a crazy thing. When people ask me, did I have akathisia? I always say, no, not really. But Chris Page had sent me something one time and I'm like, I didn't know monophobia was part of akathisia. Mm-hmm. You know, gotta remember, I don't look at a lot of that stuff now because it happened so long ago. I had the restlessness in my legs. I had, I had a lot of mental symptoms, like terrible. I got mental symptoms on the drugs, mental symptoms, you know, coming off and mm-hmm. brutal, you know? Um, and back then, I mean, thank God. I always say, I really appreciate that. My family listened to me. My neighbors were great. Everybody helped me. And, um, you know, and, and even in my neighborhood growing up, a lot of us that are still here in this area of Boston, some of my closest friends that I've known since kindergarten, all on benzos. Wow. And so as we try to help each other, I did a podcast with my friend Paula, walked into Mass General Hospital where everybody, it's so wonderful to go there with a migraine, walks out on three milligrams of clonopin. She's a small little thing, three milligrams of clonopin and 150 milligrams of an antidepressant. You did not ask the girl how she eats. She was a terrible eater, junk food junkie. And, and 40 years later, she's still tapering. She's going extremely slow. In fact, um, she was falling so much and getting concussions. So mm-hmm. I had to start taking her to the doctors. I bring the Ashton manual. One neurologist is like, oh, no, no. Clonopin doesn't hurt her at all. We go to another one. He says, yes. Uh, we go back to her doctor. Her doctor says, it is. I do believe this is what's made her sick all these years. I don't know how to help her get off. Okay, oh cut blanche. We'll do it ourselves. Which yeah. we did, but then her sister found her a wonderful doctor at Brigham and Women's. And he said to her, it's been 40 years, Paula, you know, so he's got her going very slow. But then he just all of a sudden cut her a huge amount on their antidepressant. So far, she did good. I think he's going to hold her right there. But she's got somebody good, you know, and I'm always trying to feed her good, make her food, bring it down, you know. But my life got busy and I, I couldn't be there all the time for her. So. Mm-hmm. Gosh, yeah. yeah, that's one of the things I say. We see so many people, and I'm sure that breaks your heart that they've become so secluded. If we have cancer, oh, it'd all be around us. But yep. because people think we're mentally ill, oh, I never heard of this, you need to surround these people. If you don't want to be with them, drop food off to them, send them yeah. a card, a phone call. You can't talk to them on the phone, let them know you're there. Right. That infuriates me. I know, but I, and I think that's the invisibility of it though. Like even when I see clients, cause I know you're a coach now too, which is really cool. But when I see people on zoom, I'm like, you guys look normal and sound normal. That's the problem. We right. look totally we look. normal, but you can't, you don't know how it feels on the inside of your body unless you've been through it. You just don't. Yeah. yeah. Unless they're down to a skeleton with skin, which I was at one point, you know, and their hair's falling out and they're a mess. Okay. Which does happen to some but other than that, you go, you look fine. And so they just, you know, these doctors think we're mentally ill. And I know at one point we had a discussion where all this, all this money for the opioids, 
where's the money for the benzodiazepines, which is a bigger problem. And I think they know yeah. it's a big problem. So I did that day when we were on and I mentioned it, I went right outside, Garrett was outside and I said to him, what can we do to get the money that the opioids are getting? He goes, you know what the problem is? And I'm like, what? And he goes, because the opioids are a nationwide problem and they're, they die from it. And we don't, they die. We, we don't. Unless I, we thought, kill I thought of that this morning when I was putting your post up on Twitter to, to advertise this, I was writing, this is worse than the opiate crisis. And when I it's, typed that out, I thought, but wait, we don't die from it. That's why it's not. We so don't die. And if, and if we die by suicide, which we know oh, you're just people, mentally ill. Yeah. You meant it's all their mental illness. It's all, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. And I think mm -hmm. I can't, I actually was out with friends today and I said, okay, I think, cause I'm 68. I'm like, I think when I turn 70, okay, I'm going to have to, I got to walk away at some point, but then how do you, how do you I work? I don't know. I can't, I can't. And it's not getting better. It is. It's, it's getting worse. I mean, I have, I have people I that were put on from COVID or from, they had a reaction to the shot or they had a reaction to COVID itself, or they, you know, it's the same thing. It just continues. And if anything, it's getting worse. That's what I noticed. Yeah. yeah. And the amount of the cold turkeys. So I don't know where that's coming. Are these doctors actually reading that these drugs are harmful? Oh, I better just take them all off because you're more irresponsible. Like what is going to happen here? I mean, I how many more books, how many more documentaries, how many more Facebook groups, how many more YouTube channels? I mean, can't they take one hour out of their day, you know, to look and go, hey, maybe the drugs I'm prescribing are actually harming people, you know? Um, in fact, today we were just discussing the uh, Lindsay Clancy case here, you know, the one where she killed her three children and then jumped yes. out. The yes. I talked to her lawyer. I said, I will testify. I sent him a whole bunch of information. I said, I, because the, um, other side tried to get that she looked online how long it was going to take him to go to the restaurant and come back I said I can tell you exactly why she did it I used to when my husband had to leave the house like don't leave me here alone with the kids I'm, I'm not responsible all right it'll take you 10 minutes to go there hurry up to the food and come back don't leave me here alone you know and the amount of drugs she was on no I mean toxicity yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. It, that's a crime that girl that's sad. I don't know. Yeah. When I, um, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? <laughs> and we all do that. That's oh my God, wait, there's just so many things to talk about. That's why I'm like, uh oh, where did I go? Oh God, I don't know. Let me just come. Oh, I think this is part of the problem. The doctors keep saying, I don't see this in my practice. I don't know what you're talking about. This drug has left your body. Okay. So there's multiple reasons for that. And I think part of it is our fault because the minute we find out our doctors don't get it, we leave. So of course I don't see it because most of the people I see, most people in the group, they won't go back to their doctor. They might get their prescription. They tell them what they need to hear, but they're not like trying to convince them like, no, this is benzo withdrawal. Read the freaking article. And when you do that, you know, they think you're even more crazy. I actually brought information and there wasn't a lot around 25 years ago. And she just looked at it quickly. And she said, you're not addicted to these drugs. Your husband though, from smoking. And Joe's like, I could quit anytime I want, if I wanted to, you know, I brought him his backup. And then, and then when she ever handed me the prescription for Ativan, like I said, I knew I would sue her. And when she, I, we sent for my records, this is what a jerk she was. She sends a bill for like, uh, to, to my lawyer for like $125. Yeah, she goes, you can't charge more than a nickel a page. So when she finds out she's being sued, she left the country in 30 days. What does that tell you? <sighs> Gone Guilty. in 30 days. They, she had to come back uh, for the deposition and everything was, Oh, I don't remember. I'm retired now. Oh, I don't remember. I'm retired. How many people lives did you destroy? You know? Wow. It's terrible. Yeah. So let's talk about tapering methods and the Ashton manual. Like back then, how did you guys figure out how to taper? There, so, you know, you're talking 25 years ago when everybody's trying to figure it out. The Ashton manual isn't even around for a couple of more years. So everybody's just kind of learning. I was off bad way, you know, three milligrams in four months, we know that's not good. You know, then it's like, do you reinstate? We didn't really know. So everybody's trying to figure it out back then. Then it's like, okay, we're going to start going slow. Everybody's on different drugs, Clonopin, you know, Valium, Xanax, you know, whatever. Um, and then it start coming in some with antidepressants. So it really was everybody trying to figure it out. Right. Um, so we didn't have a lot. Then it's, you know, do our diets matter? Does this matter? Okay, this one went to a naturopath. 
we're learning from, okay, you teach us what your naturopath said, or, okay, you have a doctor that switched to delibrium. Like we were literally learning, you know, trying to reach out. There's nothing 25 years ago. A couple of doctors, like I said, would switch them to Librium and they would have a better time. Like mm -hmm. even Heather Ashton, water tapering was not around. It, yeah. Everything's coming around because of people. And Heather actually liked water titration. You said, what do you think of it? I go, well, you know, too late for me. I said, but I do see that people like it. She said, I, I really like it. And I know she and Reg Pert were adamant that you switched to Valium, but I don't know your opinion on this. No, 50-50. I see 50%. They, they, they say it relieves some of their symptoms. Sometimes those people will reach tolerance again, 50%, they get worse. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, Ativan was the devil I knew. I always say if the Ashton manual was around when I was tapered, I don't think I would have switched. I no. just, so what I did, even when I tapered, I knew, all right, I got to get it level in my blood. And I took it, you know, uh, between seven and eight in the morning and seven, eight at night. I did go to a health food store. They had given me some like natural stuff to help, and I would kind of use that to boost it. You know, all right, I got to hold off. I can't take it till then. I kept it level. Like there's no more fooling around. I want to get off. We're going to keep yeah. it level. And I just tape it way too fast. Um, but that being said, I've seen some go to Valium do great. I've yeah. seen others go to Valium and regretted it and jump. They literally, they don't go back, jump back to their original. And, and now they know I got to go slow. Yeah. There are some doing the Jula scale from the original drug. There are some tapering strips, water titration. I saw somebody four times try to get off, couldn't do it, did water titration, made it. Yeah. Um, it's, I think, I always say I would have chosen compounding, I think, just because, mm, easier to you measure. know, life can be hectic. I would have chosen compounding. Um, yeah, I mean, there's all these different ways now. And I mean, thankfully, it takes all these people that have been injured to come up with all of this stuff. And, you know, some do it with milk or some do it, you know, the water in milk or water or alcohol or whatever they do. I mean, whatever works, I think is what you should do. We know our bodies and I think that's what you go with. And I'm just a big believer in going slow. Now, I think we had a conversation yesterday. Dr. Pert said, when you take a drug, okay, and just so everybody knows, it's Dr. Reg Pert. He was a PhD. Heather Ashton took a lot of counsel from him. He ran victims of tranquilizers in the UK and he was harmed himself. Back in the day when you were sick from benzos, he had 35 electric shock treatments. And he had to get his whole scientific mind back. So he had a lot of anger towards what happened to him. But he would say, um, like, if you take a benzo and when you take it, you actually feel worse. But as it's leaving your body, you're actually feeling better. He felt, you know, he's not going to make you hold for three or four weeks because he, he would he used to work individually with people back then every week because it's, it's not working for you. Anyway. It is literally poison. And he, and this one person I remember he worked with, she's like, I just want a cold turkey. Nope, because it's going to cause more harm to your brain. So every week, cut, 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 cut till she was off. And in nine months, she was back to work. So that was amazing. Now, the other one we talked about um, yesterday. So I never had it. Well, I was off of the drugs, but some people, certain antibiotics can literally go in and flush out the benzos. So he had this theory and he would have people do it. He would have them flood themselves if they were with Valium. I can't say with another drug, um, like 30 milligrams, one time only put it back in. Wow. Wow. You're done one time and then just get right back on your dose. Wow. I, I can't, you know, again, because what do you do when it just no. like flushed out and you're in a cold turkey? Cause they would all say they felt like they were in a cold turkey withdrawal. So um, I know I, there, I think there's so much we don't know about gut health and like right. how the drugs impact the gut. I'm going to interview Dr. Natasha McC Campbell McBride about GAPS protocol, but I want to ask her, like, what do psychiatric drugs do to the gut? Like, right. I don't, the, the best thing I ever heard it explained was I did a panel discussion in Georgia in February, and there was a doctor there that was a functional medicine doctor who also did like genetics and gut health. And he said, Angie, on the tip of a drug is a fluoride ion, and that has to penetrate the gut lining, penetrate your cells get into your bloodstream, go through your blood brain barrier, and then into your brain. That's how drugs work. That's yeah. how they, that's why they have to be formed a certain way. Like it has to penetrate things to make it work. And I was like, oh my God, like, that's kind of scary. Like yeah. that it has to but do that where the body. gut comes from. So I know with me, I'm running a group. I'm on the phone with people. And at five years off, 
And so one of the mistakes I made, and I'm public about this, I did a vegetarian diet. Okay, vegetarian is supposed to be so good for us. I do it perfectly. 80% raw, 20% cooked. Um, I still had eggs. I am getting sick. I do it for a year and a half. Like, I can't believe I kept going. Mm-hmm. And by the end of that, I am so ill. I, I, I'm sicker than when I came off benzos. I didn't wow. have DPDR. I, nothing feels real around me. I am gone. I am like, I'm actually in tears. I'm calling different people around the world. And then I, I just think I, was it then? Or I think I wait, I wait till five years. In fact, cause I had called Reg up at that point. I said, I'm either going back on Ativan or I'm going to kill myself. This is how sick I am. And so when I, at five years off, when I work with a functional medicine doctor, my gut is in such bad shape. So I have candida. They said they hadn't seen uh, such a high count because oh. I'm giving it the perfect diet. I'm juicing oh, raw food. Yeah. You man, I'm giving it everything and um, no protein. I mean, I'm getting protein from beans. I wasn't getting protein. And, um, and so within three months, I so saw candida leaky gut and malabsorption. So this is when I'm down to 97 pounds. I'm, I think I'm, I mean, I believed, I don't think I would have lived much longer. I'm dying. You know? And so within three months of putting meat back in, and no raw food for at least three months. My weight's coming on. Within three months, I've got my strength back. And one of the other tests you want to do was this liver test that they don't do it now. And I love that test. I waited 11 years to do it because I figured, all right, consider where I was. I'll take where I am. But I wasn't fully back. And so when my daughter got sick from an antibiotic, I do that liver test then. So we all have like phase one, phase two of our livers. So phase one is these people that can drink an ounce of carrot juice and they are... Mm-hmm like psychotic they're so sick or so mine phase two and a lot of us that have done the functional medicine it's the phase two so phase one i can burn up uh, something phase two gets rid of i can't get rid of it so it's recirculating you know recycling in the body so as i slowly um when i do that test i start with like a quarter of a teaspoon of like this medicinal powder and this there's many different ways to do it it isn't one way i am slowly like you could get i was getting better and better but each time before i got better i got sicker the depression the crying what's wrong with me and then i would see my bowels go yellow i'm like i'm detoxing when that would pass i'd feel great okay time to go higher and this is how we then did that i also had a genetic test done years before and i wasn't born with everything so i could never drink alcohol when i was younger i always reacted to medication so i just took a lot of us just don't i always ask people when they contact me, I'm like, could you drink alcohol? I would say the majority say, nope. So you don't have to go spend a lot of money on these tests. Poor liver function. We just don't metabolize stuff. When you were a kid, could you take medication? Nope. Always had a problem. So again, why spend the money? Anything Mm -hmm. we do, I believe we have to do it very slowly because if not, that's where they'll say, oh, don't do anything because you're going to get sick. I would never take a full dose of anything. Everything I do, Uh, I do so small. Yep. I mean, what do you think that is? Like, let's talk about protracted withdrawal because I'm in it still. I still have symptoms. They're mild. They're not life limiting, but I don't feel great. Like I just don't, you know? And I'm like, what is it? Like I eat pretty good. I exercise. I'm outside in the sun. You know, I have good friends. I have healthy relationships. I don't take drugs. I barely take supplements. If, if I do like lately, I've just been taking omega three and Mm dim for estrogen. That's it. And Mm -hmm. it's not even every day. It's very sporadic. So it's like, why do some of us take so long to recover? And why are some of us so hypersensitive to every little thing? Because I, I even tried a supplement last year, a year ago, and I had taken everything that was in the supplement before separately, but it was for breast health. And there was this one little thing in there. It said American skull cap. And I looked on all the lists. I look in all the groups. Everybody said, don't take Chinese skull cap, but I couldn't find American skull cap. And I was like, it's the last tiny little ingredient there's probably time like nothing in there like just take it it's fine so I took like a fifth of the pill I woke up in the middle of the night and it literally felt like gravity had disappeared and I was floating in the universe uh. and I was like what the hell is it and then the, I woke up the next morning and I felt that doom feeling come back and I was like oh this is not good no. but it burned off quickly within two hours I was fine I was back to normal but it scared me I was like my body Wait. cannot handle it so what what do you think oh. is going on with some of us I, I don't know I think it's different for all of us and again if that were me I I would be nervous with it I would have opened it up or broken it I would have I did it. I opened it and did a fifth of the pill oh, and that's wow. what it did to me wow. that's what it did to yeah. me 
See, so again, we're, we're all sensitive, even I. So we were talking earlier, you know, my thyroid crashed this year and I'm doing it all natural. Not by, I, I wasn't going to do it by choice. I can't get in with an endocrinologist and I literally could not function. I couldn't walk up and down the stairs. I was losing weight so fast. And so in working with a, um, you know, a functional medicine doctor who specializes in thyroid and thank God for the Benzo community. This is how we all know about these things. So this was a girl here in Massachusetts. I knew she had had somebody. I called her. I'm like, this is what happened. I sent her my blood work. She's like, oh my God, I've never seen tests so bad. And um, she's like, how are you functional? Like, don't you have anxiety? And I'm like, you know, I think my heart's racing so fast. I don't even know. No. I mean, the weight was just coming off so fast. And then it was going to take, I guess, I think I basically begged her husband to get me an appointment. And then Holly Hyde had told me about this thyroid coming. It's just four herbs. I was nervous taking it. I, I read on Amazon. I'm reading the comments. I, but I started with a half a drop of full and I'm still, I won't do more than that. And how did this little half a drop of full calm my body, my heart rate, it all stopped. And so I'm like, I'll never be without that. It, it literally saved my life because I don't have an appointment till August. So from March till August, I could not function. And my, my daughter's like, well, let's cancel my baby shower. You can't go. I'm like, oh, I'll pull myself together for three hours. I would not have been able to walk out of the house and go to her shower. I'm like, I'll pull myself together. I was great the day of her shower. You know, now she's got the baby. And I'm so fine. you're saying you're saying like your meds, you did have medication and supplement sensitivities yeah. way back then, but now you seem okay. No, no medication. So no. The, the thyroid coming was just an herbal thing. While I start working with this doctor, she ought to specific thyroid test different than a regular doctor, even an endocrinologist would. Mm -hmm. And so everything shockingly is the gut. It's all the tests zero in on the gut. And when I started to read fighting braves or I got the thyroid medical medium book, it's all about the gut. How mm -hmm. is it like after all these years, but I was under a lot of stress this past year. I didn't feel it. I thought I was handling it all fine, but my guess my gut wasn't. And so in a matter of two months of doing what she's asked me to do, and I was a little nervous, all right, today I only take one thing. I'm still, after all these years, I'm cautious of everything I'm taking, but I would look at everything. I'm like, a lot of them are all digestive enzymes. So I'm on three different types of digestive enzymes. And I just had the blood test redone. They came back. They are so improved in two months. Maybe. I can't believe it. I, can I reverse, can't reverse your health with so many, yeah, natural stuff. You know, but again, I'm not telling everybody run out and do that. Like mm -hmm. I did try, I will go to the endocrinologist, you know, in, in August and I beg to be put on every cancellation list. I have another appointment in October. I just, I have to stumble across this other talk. Like, like they're going to leave you that long waiting to see an endocrinologist, but there are things that can help. And I wouldn't tell anybody to go do anything without working with a doctor. I did not do this with, I mean, I did do the thyroid calming. That mm -hmm. was a lifesaver for wow. me because yeah. I had a function. So speaking of Holly Hardman, I I know this because I just went through it myself, but what was it like for you to go through, to go through a film production with their filming you every couple of years? Yeah. What was that so like? We, Talk we about talked it. about that when, when we met here in Boston, it's quite an interesting thing. So we, I always say we have to put our money where our mouth was. I think um, it's interesting. You to watch the process um, because for me, it's like my whole family is involved and, you know, and whatnot, but, uh, there's so much that was filmed and you got to be at the, uh, state house. I, yeah. Year. I have a cameo and as prescribed, I'm at the dinner table when we're eating lunch at the very end. I was like, you just seem to yes. flash me. But yeah, and I, I, I yeah. be there. I had to leave to get to Dana. No, Park, you were gone. I was so upset. Yeah. I had to leave as soon as it was over because he had to go for immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that day, just so people understand. Being in the room that day when, like, when Josh and his brother got up, like, nobody, we are in, like, I've got tears, tears dripping down tears. my face. Yes. And the doctors are always asked, and I want people to know this, because they are asked to stay and listen. Not to our once. testimony, you guys, yeah. we're, we're before the state house. And all the yeah. legislators are sitting in front of us and everybody has their turn and they come up and they read their testimony. They, they share their story or they talk about the research. A doctor might testify, but mostly benzo survivors. So I there's a group first. of doctors. Yeah. yeah. And I, because the bill you know, was filed, I had asked, I go up first each year. I'm the only one they hear like, are you kidding me? And then they're out and they get to come up 
and then they're out the door. One year, the very, very first year, one, uh, one of them stayed. And I went up and I talked to him afterwards. Like he was, he did, he goes, you know, I'm very sorry, you know, for the suffering. I don't see you coming forward when, you know, when we need doctors to come forward now because of COVID, it's all via Zoom. So mm-hmm. thank God last time people came, but Holly got some really good footage that you can only fit so much, as you know, into yes. a film. Mm-hmm. So I got, because of, I think it was, was it the nurse that was the head of the committee that year? I believe yes. she. Yes, the nurse. So because she heard that my niece uh, was 30 years old, went in to come off alcohol, comes out on Xanax, gets in a car accident, give it a pain pill, and she dies at 30 years old, leaving three little girls behind. So the governor had his opioid meeting coming up and 10 o'clock the night before my son's boss, Representative McMurtry calls and he's like, they want you in the state house to speak. I'm like, you've got three minutes. They'll get you in up front. Like we were in even a bigger auditorium. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I think I was on the phone with Janice or Nicole. Like we try, we gotta get I think and, or that yeah. was a different year. That was a different year. When like, I was coaching. all right, we yeah. need, we need like, some action here. I got three minutes and it's 10 o'clock at night. And then I have to practice to make sure I don't go over the three minutes. Like we've yeah. got to be ready. So that, that was like, so that was filmed and that was a powerful talk. So when they're doing these films, they're getting so much information. There's so much, but only so much can go into film. So I think we have to put our money where our mouth is. We have to show up. We have to do, we have to put ourselves out there. I always stayed at the background. You didn't really see me writing a lot. I don't like to be out there. And the other thing I was upset about is because of Ben says my teeth really moved and I see other people and I'm just Mine finishing too. Mine yeah. Yeah. I tell people get Invisalign so I did braces the first year we were going to speak in 2015 Garrett said mom put it off don't put them on till after the first time you're up there I'm like, okay I put them on the like the week later and I thought I had researched everything and I had such a reaction to like the what did you put in my mouth she put nickel wires in my mouth so everything was good, but the nickel wires. And so in 10 days, I haven't taken off again. I got to do fun. I have to do functional medicine, clear the nickel out of my body. Ugh. And then I, I, I could still function, but I, I did not feel well. And as mm. soon as they came off, I was 50% better. That's how much like that saliva is mixing with the metal. It's not good. So I think Invisalign, I was nervous for years to do Invisalign with the plastic in my mouth. But now I tell people, just go get something made to hold your teeth in place. I see so many, their teeth move. In fact, yeah. I showed my orthodontist a picture of me, you know, years ago while I'm on Ativan. And she goes, what happened to your teeth? I go, I came off Ativan and they just really moved, you know? Mm-hmm. So I know I noticed that too. It's so weird. Ugh. Yeah. So well, get anus. Like, so these documentaries I think are important. I think each of the doctor of the filmmakers have put their heart and soul into them. Yes. They're all important. Um, we, we all got to work together and just spread the word. I mean, look how many books are out there. How many YouTube channels keep going, you know, keep and going. we just I know gotta- that's the, that's the, I think that's the hardest part for me is like you work so hard and you don't know. Cause we did 180 film screenings all over the world, 180 with panels, with doctors, with survivors, with whoever we could get with Bob, you know, experts whoever we could get and that's all on the youtube channel and yeah our youtube channel grew to 1 million views before i left but it's like did it really change anything i don't know like it's so frustrating you've been doing this for 25 years yeah and that's you know at, at breakfast, the breakfast part. With my girlfriends i'm like you know all these people that have put their lives out there to try to make a change and it's still how it's is like it chip, that it's like chipping away not- at an iceberg or something yeah, we need the old I don't ones. Know. I, I don't know what the nut is to crack, but here's here's my I talked to David Cohen. He's a professor at UCLA. He's in our film, Medicaid Normal, but he's like a mentor to me. And I'll call him every once in a while. And every time I'm in LA, I'll go see him and have lunch. But I asked him, I was like, Do you think this is getting better? What do you think? He said, Angie, I think it's getting worse. Like they're backing into a corner and prescribing more than they ever have in civil commitment and forced medication and ECT. It's all getting worse. <laughs> And yeah. then I said, well, from my perspective, I think it's getting worse, but I feel like at a certain point, they're going to harm so many people that the entire family will stop using these services. That's what I think. What do you think? I don't know, but I also see it getting worse. Or is it just there's so much out there that more people are coming? And they're really, as far as the mental illness, when you see these people getting better, where was the mental illness? You, the doctors have created it with these drugs. 
I mean, it's, so it's funny, somebody that I talked to yesterday and, and everybody that we do talk to, when you see something on TV now, what's the first thing you say is they were on medication, you know, never heard of mass shootings before. I, every time I know uh, Dr. Pratt, when he did his research years ago, Regis been dead for a while, in every single case, they were on psychiatric medication. Oh, no. When's it going to stop? Stop saying all the mental illness, you know? Oh, they're trying to get these kids in high school to do that teen screen. I think I was the only mother that wouldn't allow my daughter to do. I'm like, you're not filling out any forms. What kid doesn't have depression? What kid doesn't can't stand my parents? I hate life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. No, you're not filling it out. We're going up against everybody. No, no. Yeah, it's tragic for me just to see so many people go through what I did. I would have thought that we would like 25 years ago. We're really going to bring this to the limelight. We're going to make a difference. We're going to break it open. Yeah. But, but what you have done is more people who are suffering of finding out why. It's That's just, true. you know, one of the things I kept saying is I want to find the magic bullet. But now you find out at the end of the rainbow, there isn't a magic bullet. It's something different for each one of us. So somebody can get off and not have a problem. Somebody is going to have severe gut issues. Somebody is going to have mental symptoms. Somebody else is going to have physical and no mental it affects us all differently, but I have always said, I feel the gut and the liver are two key parts to this, you know? Um, and if we can get somebody before they taper, doing the good diet, exercising, have their support, I have absolutely seen a difference when, and you do that nice slow taper first before you bring in that harm or the poor ones that they've been cold turkey and not that they can't heal. We've seen some cold yeah. turkeys heal better than those that micro tapered. Because yeah. you've got those that are micro tapering that, well, I don't believe in taking supplements. I don't believe in this. And I, and again, I'm, I'm not that everybody has to take them. I mean, to this day, I still take magnesium because um, one of the people that was, she was a, a professor at Yale who was also a benzo victim. She said that benzos do something that we can't maintain our magnesium level. So you can put your feet in Epsom salt. I mean, not everybody has to. If I don't take it, but I'm always under a lot of stress. So I get, I, I can feel, if I feel any twitch in my calves, I'll take my magnesium. But I faithfully take two when I get up in the morning and two at night. But I've seen where others have taken it and they got sick. I know. It's, it's all different. So I don't like when I see that that's one of the things never to take because it's helped so many people. And yet I, we that's funny you are. say that. I've never heard anybody say that that way because I took Epsom baths. And I, I literally could not have made it through acute without it. I promise. Absolutely. I don't oh, know yeah. what it does to my body. I don't know the research behind it. All, all I know is it helped and it took the edge off, but I know I have clients that take it and their whole, their whole body stiffens up. Like uh, you know. I couldn't do it. I had to jump out of the Epsom salt, but I thought my heart started racing, but then I learned it should only be about two degrees above body temperature. I went into a hot bath with Epsom salt. I don't know if you could handle the hot water. I did hot, real hot. Wow. Oh, see, that's what, but now I also down the beach in the summer. So that first year when I'm sick and I can feel I'm the fourth house from the water and the kids have walked me down, I'm in the ocean. I would always feel better being in the ocean in the nice salt ocean. So there are gentle ways we can do things or eat foods high in magnesium, mm -hmm. get that gut going so that you can absorb your food because I wasn't absorbing my food. I mean, those tests prove I was not absorbing my food. I mean, because the food I was eating, you wouldn't become 97 pounds, you right. know? Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. There's, it's so complex. So I just want to make that clear for everybody listening. Like it's very individual. The way there. I look at it, it's like the benzo crisis will throw you into a healing journey, whether you want to be or not. And you got to figure your out your way out and you have to do so very carefully with informed consent. Like just know anything you try could backfire. It could help you. We don't know. We don't start slow, taper up, be careful. You know, everything a doctor tells you or a nutritionist or a functional medicine doctor, don't believe them at their word. Go research it. Like don't, you nope. can't ever do that again. Yeah. I have a thing on my podcast. The first where I get my story, then I say getting ready to taper. Then I do the do's and don'ts. And I think the do's and don'ts are good. What I've learned over the years. And then at the end, I would say, don't even listen to me. Like, don't listen to me. Everything you do, make your own choices because we yeah. are all so different. When somebody says, oh, I could do this. I'm like, you could, like, I couldn't do that. Like, and we all have such different symptoms. You know, mine were truly that agoraphobia, monophobia, not that my you. body wasn't sick, not yeah. that my body wasn't sick, but, but that was hard for me because I, I had such an outgoing job. I mean, just 
loved going, couldn't wait to get up, go to work every day, have the first kid go back to work. Never thought after the second one, I wasn't going back, you know? So it just, uh, and, you know, and here's the other thing. Now that I'm 68, here's the other side of it. Cause I, I never did go back to work because then my brother had a baby and I helped raise his son. You know, my mother's got polio. She's getting older. You know, I'm home for her. Then my husband, he gets sick. Gotta be home for him. You know, there's just, everybody got used to somebody being home to handle everything. So that's yeah. okay. But at the end of that, the retirement, you know, now Joe and I look at it from another, you know, when they're taking all these people out of the workforce or you're on disability or whatever you're on, your retirement isn't what it should be. When we get older, you're hit again by what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened to me. I was on disability for 18 years. I am just getting off now and I have zero retirement, zero saving, nothing. And I'm alone. I'm by my own. I'm not married. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's a lot, but like the devastation that benzos and other psych drugs can do to your life, like impact your social, mo- what do they call that? Socioeconomic mobility. Like I can't, you just go buy a house when you've been on disability for all these years. Like so many people out there listening. Yeah. It's, it's it's, yeah. it's awful and it just hits and so when we are in at the state house and you want you get three minutes you want to say so many things all these people that you are drugging and that they're no longer working and then you know down the road so i even look at my own kids that they had to have loans for you know nursing school or law school it affected it goes all the way down that they're paying those now that they shouldn't have had to because of both of us working they wouldn't have had to but my mm-hmm. husband even had to leave work at one point, because I'm so, unless my mother was here in the summers, I can't function. I can't take the kids where they have to go. I don't want to be left alone. If somebody's leaving, go get my aunt, bring her here. How crazy, but I had that help. I had that family around here. Look at the ones that aren't, and that, they break my heart when they're alone and nobody's believing yeah. them. And So hard. Yeah, so that, that leads to another question. I bet my audience, ha- I have a couple questions coming in, but um, one, can you talk about there is like onesies and twosie cases that are 10 years off or 12 years off or 15 years off. And they might have lingering symptoms. I don't think it's like super severe, like akathisia at 15 years off. I've never seen that, but like people get so scared by those couple cases. So right. what have you seen over 25 years, the general so healing pattern? I, yeah. I have a really good case. So there was a guy that was in my original group and he was from Ireland. And so there were a group of them in Ireland, you know, that were all kind of, they, they found each other and they were meeting. So he was 16 years off of benzos. And I don't know what his habits were, but it's 16 years because he, he said, Geraldine, one of these days I have to tell you, he goes, it was a spiritual experience where everything heals. He's perfectly fine again. And then uh, one of the authors of um, The Accidental Addict, one of the dice, because it was Di Pritt and Di Russell, mm-hmm. all those years she thought she was sick still from benzos, turned out she had a little tumor on her adrenal gland. No. See, so I, I'm not one that says don't ever go to a doctor. Like when I my thyroid happened and I had to go for an ultrasound and a CAT scan. Like, okay, all right. Like here I have to produce. I hardly ever produce in front of the medical field. I do have a good doctor. I'll go once a year. But she had a small little tumor that that mm-hmm. was causing that fatigue that what, what was holding her back. Um, I'm trying to think of a few others. Um, but, but I mean, there's not groups of people from 1990 that are still damaged. There's just not. No, doesn't exist. No. Um, and, and, you know, the other thing is, I always give the example, we had somebody from Australia and he's like, oh, I'm so sick. I, I just can't get better. And then we find out he drinks Coca-Cola all day long and he's writing to any Americans to send him Belveda cheese because he loves <laughs> Belveda cheese. Yeah. We all know that's that they don't even keep it in the that's not cheese. That's crap. No, that's like right. Yeah. Like so, a brick of orange Play-Doh or something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I, you know, once yeah. a year I'll make one dish because my sister-in-law made it. My daughter likes it. Once a year it's allowed in the house and that's it. But so you don't know what people's habits are. There was some guy and he's telling people, you know, I'm just not healed. We find out he has two beers every night because his doctor told him it's okay to have two beers every night. Oh now God. I am very big into no alcohol. Easy for me to say, mm. I don't drink. And I know on some of the people they're like, well, you know, it's okay. It's so I know even Heather in the manual, she mentions you could have a little bit. I do not. I've seen too many me too. take that, go out for their birthday and have a couple of organic beers and be sick for another year. Is it worth it? 
not worth like it. not worth it. Nope. nope. You know, my, sometimes my kids will say, will you ever have a drink? I'm like, nope, didn't drink before. Not going to drink now. Yeah, it just doesn't exist in my world at all. I have friends, they all drink. And I, I always joke and I say, I want you to drink because then you won't remember how bad I dance the next day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. You do what you want. I'm not drinking. I'm going to dance and have a good time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but so everybody heals. Do you agree with that? Or do you think some people have so, a little bit of triggering stuff? Like I'm, you- I'm going to go by one of my Benzo friends who um, she's not healed. She has minor symptoms left, but she also calls any, even eating healthy hocus pocus. No, I don't believe in any of that. No, nope, don't believe in that. Don't believe in this. Don't believe in that. So, and even her neighbor said, you know, cause she can function, go out, do everything. She's just left with a couple of minor things. So she feels that eating right is hocus pocus, taking supplements is hocus pocus, go to acupuncture, hocus pocus. I mean, that's what she calls it, but that's her choice. So you should not go on these groups and say, you're not healed. You probably could have if you changed some of your habits, you know, because we see some of them that have been on 25, 30, 40 years getting better. Yeah. So I feel, what is it? Is it something with each one? Like, let's say I never went to a doctor. I always say, if I didn't do functional medicine, and I don't believe everybody has to go because you can go on and look at the GAPS diet because you're going to be interviewing her. I think that's a tough diet, but others have done it. Oh, you yeah. can do the whole 30. It takes everything inflammatory out. If you even look at um, the Bredesen protocol, which is you know, to prevent, uh, to reverse Alzheimer's because you know my brother's got it right now. It's all take the grains away. I follow Dr. David Perlmutter. I love his stuff. No grains, no pain. Is it inflammation? A little bit of inflammation in the body can cause a lot of symptoms. These yeah. drugs have caused an inflammatory response. But, you know, for me, I'm just going to go by me. I know my gut and I have poor liver function. Always did. You mm-hmm. know, couldn't drink alcohol, reacted to medication. How were you when you were younger? I, this is not something I like to admit, but when I was little, my mom had a bottle of that pink amoxicillin in the fridge door. And I thought that tasted so good. And every once in a while I'd open the door as an eight year old and take a swig and put it back. That's an antibiotic hitting my gut. I don't, I don't like that. But on the opposite side, I played in the dirt all the time. I was always outside. I was always riding my bike or roller skates or in the garden. So like I had a lot of good, you know, camping and dirt. I was really into the dirt. (laughs) So I think that helped my, my uh, gut health, but yeah. I don't think I had tons of antibiotics. It was just every once in a while. I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought it tasted good. Yeah. Oh no, that's they, here. They call it bubble gum medicine. They call it's it bubble gum. Bubble yeah. Bubble gum it medicine. So that's good. how they get the kids all excited for their bubble gum yeah. medicine. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Yeah. So let's, I think we got a couple of questions. Let's take them rapid fire though. Cause I don't, I could talk to you all day. You know that. Um, I know. They said, did Geraldine have medicine and supplement sensitivities? I did. So I never really could take medication somehow with the Ativan, but I kept going higher, reach intolerance, going higher. I'm knowing that I'm going higher and I'm questioning the doctor, but as far as supplements, I'm, I've never taken a lot and I have had it turn around and backfire on me a couple of times where like, Oh my God, I'm sick. And you know, 10 days later you can ride it out and it's Fine. gone. I haven't had anything that made me deathly ill, but I'm very cautious with everything I take. And I only will take like more prof- professional brands, mm-hmm. like Thorn when, supplements. Yes, yeah, Thorn. Yeah. You know, so for anybody, if you know somebody that's a nurse, you know anybody with a license, EmersonEcologics.com is where mm-hmm. if you get a friend that can get an account, you can go in and order under them with your own credit card. You're not buying off of them, but you are getting professional brands that have the even my Celtic sea salt. I can get there. Mm-hmm. I just got our um like this really good sunscreen that gets a hundred out of a hundred on the yucca, you know, Y U K A. you heard of that yep. app? Yes. I have it Love on my that phone. App. Yep. Um, it's funny because my niece's sister, she had a problem, like no doctor could figure out what it was. She gets the yucca app, yuccas, everything in her house, gets rid of all the junk. And I guess that what? Too. This thing goes away. This feeling that she had, she yuccas everything. Yeah. Wow. We changed all of our products. This one product I thought was so good rated as zero. Oh. Like that, right out of the house that's a good thing so this is what yucca looks like everybody yes. it looks yeah. like that and you just it's click it and then you you can scan a barcode and you just like yeah. when you before i buy something from the grocery store i scan it and it'll tell me you know this ingredient is not recognized it's you know be careful and it'll give you a score so believe yeah. it or not like the things you think are good like mrs myers or tom's toothpaste no they've been bought by other companies and they put the crap right back in it 
Yeah. And they, the, the thing is on there, if it gets a poor rating like 38 over out of 100, I'll look and go, okay, well, it's high in fat, high in this. I'm going to eat that. Like it doesn't yeah. have bad chemicals. So you got to you gotta look and see. What I also like is it will give you recommendations instead of this, buy this. Buy this and stuff. So I changed mm -hmm. my deodorant, changed everything based on the recommendation. So, yep. you know, what goes yep. in, I'm, I'm careful what I put in through my skin. And Exactly. Anything you... Well, and I don't want to freak people out that are early in withdrawal. Like you can't do this until you can do it, but this experience and you, and you can choose whether you want to do this or not, but this experience will make you look at everything completely different. Like I don't, I don't just go, I don't ride in a car with people that have that scented crap sticking out of the, like, I'm like, right. I pull it out. Like I don't yeah. fabric softener. No Windex. No tied laundry pods. No, I don't use any of that crap. Yeah. And we're not telling people they have to do that. Those no, are personal don't have choices to. that yes. we don't want. So I just don't to. want it around me, just, you know, I don't, yeah. but do I eat meticulous most of the time? Most and then the rest of the time, if I'm at a party, I, I want to relax and enjoy myself. But I'm trying right now because of the thyroid issue, I'm trying to be gluten free. I actually would prefer to just do whole 30 and paleo because then the grains are out. It's yeah. just such a I did. I did whole 100 in withdrawal and it helped me. It helped my sleep. It helped. Yeah. Uh, my itching, I had real bad itching on my chest and it like went away when I did that strange, yeah. like in four days, like things started to turn around. So I, I I'm a big proponent of diet. I just say yeah. eat less crap. I'm not like a fan of this or that, or this I'm definitely on the paleo. At, that's kind of where I hang out, but yeah. Um, yeah. it's been huge for me, honestly. Okay. Another question we got, what is the name of the thyroid supplement again? Uh, somebody's asking. So again, this is only for hyper thyroid if you have a hyper you do not take it and then you go on amazon and read the reviews it's called thyroid calming by farm something or other let me just see um i mean what a lifesaver for me i can't even believe the difference like literally my husband saw me go from my can't function because my heart's racing so hard mm -hmm. to um totally functional mm -hmm. um and i only do a half a drop of full like oh by far herb farm so it's thyroid calming. I'll show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. That little bottle there. I, I even bought a second bottle. I said to my husband, if I ever dropped it, oh my gosh, no, I'd have to have a second one here because. Oh yeah, you better have a backup. Yeah, I said I had to have before. a backup. Yeah. But I just went two days. I forgot it one day because I forgot it once when I first started doing the stuff from the doctor. Oh, I had to come home because you could immediately feel it. So I forgot it one day this past week. And I'm like, I felt fine. I said, I'm not going to take it the next day. Still felt fine. So I don't know if I need it anymore because she's getting my thyroid, my blood tests are all improving. Some of right back into range. All Amazing. just by reversing. You're just reversing it on your self, body self-healing. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. So. Okay. Here's, here's a tricky question. I see two natural doctors, but both have detoured me from heavy metals. Have not detoured me. So is it safe to do heavy metal detox while I'm tapering? That's a good question. So I actually asked a holistic pharmacist about this recently, and he said, everybody's different. He feels it should be a half an hour before you take medication or two hours after. But, you know, again, he said, everyone's different. Some are going to respond very well to that. Some are not because, you know, look at, I had heavy metal. I had the nickel in my mouth from the wires and I can't believe how sick that made me. So we had to just like, I, but I'm off drugs, so I could pull it out, yeah. you know, yeah. and as I was doing it, I just felt better and better. You know, my brother's about to go through mercury. Um, I just did that. I did that. Yeah. I got I all the mercury out of do. my mouth. It didn't do, I didn't feel better or worse. It didn't do nothing. I to felt me. worse, but I was very sick back then. So mm -hmm. I only did one part and never did the rest. But my brother who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, he's one of the twins, his mercury, he's doing the Brenson protocol on a scale of one to 10, he's a nine for mercury. So he's getting um, his taken out. They start to pull the mercury first, then they'll take it out of his mouth, then they'll keep detoxing him. And he's kind of getting excited. He's like, well, I still have Alzheimer's. I'm like, I don't know, but I'm sure you're going to be much improved, but yeah. he's got to remain on the diet, you know, um, and the supplements and the first six weeks he did it, everybody saw a difference in him. So wow. it can yeah. work. Amazing. All right. Somebody's asking about what does mental akathisia feel like? So I'm going to assume that's what I had. Again, nobody had the word akathisia years ago when we were going right. through. This. Wow. So, and as I'm looking it up and I'm actually on the akathisia side, I, I was like, 
you know, I think I'm glad I didn't know certain words. I, I'm glad I didn't know air hunger. I'm glad I didn't know akathisia. Yep. Because we, when you hear that word, nobody likes yeah. the end result of some people. So for me, mental akathisia was, I had monophobia, terrible. I didn't see agoraphobia on that list, which I had horrifically. I mean, to get me out in the car and to go somewhere was they were saying, we're taking you to the guillotine, your head's coming off tonight. Um, you know, the fears and phobias that you have of everything. If, if I did get out and if you, we, let's say, oh, you take me for a ride to the bank. If there was a car in front of us and one got behind me, I would lose my mind. Uh, I'd do the same thing. So my, and my son's like, what is wrong? He tried to take me to a mall one time and he goes to go down the escalator and I can't do it. And this do that. Yeah. What my poor son has gone through, he has to run up past everybody who's pissed off at him to get me. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. I was like a carefree easy. So to me, that's mental akathisia. All these crazy mental things I couldn't have dreamed of. You just, you no. couldn't put it together in a horror movie. Like no. I wouldn't have caught, I couldn't have had compassion towards you now because we feel it. We felt it. So when somebody calls us, we're like, dear no. God, it's torture. No, yes. Torture. Yeah, yep. all the right. thoughts. People have the thoughts, the the um, intrusive thoughts, which are terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, so and I think sometimes all that images. It's like uh, it's ruminative and it's repeating, yeah. or like all your worst fears are being you're being tortured with them. Or I should never listen to my doctor, and I'm gonna get worse as I taper. It's like constant, constant like your brain is running 100 miles an hour. Yeah. You know? And I think being positive because the groups today. So let me just say this: when we started my group years ago. Everybody was polite and kind, and I never thought I didn't need a moderator or this and that. We helped each other. And now you just see, um, like, the jealousy. If somebody says, hey, I got better. Well, I am not. And I don't want to hear you at a barbecue. Like, I wanted to hear you. I want to see you driving around the country. I want to yeah. know that can be me someday. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that that's just part of being sick. They're, you know, they've been made sick. Their lives have been ripped away from them. Yeah. So, I mean, there's just a the support groups are so good and comforting in one sense and so scary that you don't even know if you should eat a piece of bread, the right toothpaste. What should I do? Oh, I can't have that. I, I mean, we didn't have that years ago and I'm kind of glad I would have been, I, I probably would have been down to like 80 pounds, you know? Yeah. Right. It's hard. I know. There are some that ate anything, anything to get better. I did a podcast with, um, the nurse that, you know, nobody thought she would get better. And she's like, I ate anything to survive. And then the yeah. other one, you know, that gets down to like 70 something pounds and then it becomes a nurse when she's pregnant and goes in with a migraine, which can be normal migraines in pregnancy. Yeah. And she's given out of it. Those two stories of recovery, I think are miraculous. One took not one supplement. And wow. then in fact, the two that found each other in the support groups, they were as sick as each other. One took, did the functional medicine and took supplements. The other one doesn't. So it's like they both recovered. They both recovered. One yeah. goes on to become a nurse and have four more children. Wow. And you know, and but it's funny when I did the podcast, she said, but when I drink alcohol or too much coffee, I don't feel well. Well, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> well, you, I think I, you, know, you still have a little bit of I drink tons of coffee and it's not good. I've recently cut down to half calf. But when I drink a lot of coffee, I don't feel good either. <laughs> Yeah. I, I don't I, think I, anybody I, would feel good. I don't know. It's just, it's yeah. not, you should, it's a stimulant. It's like racing you up. Why do I need to feel more racy than I already am? No, have thanks. you ever tried to see no, I tried to get my husband on to see no, my dad drinks that my dad drinks that. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, I, I'm not a coffee drinker or a tea drinker. So it's always very easy for me to say, but you yeah. know, my son will say, what, well, will you ever have coffee? I go, do you want me to spin off the planet? I'm hyper I enough. <laughs> I like, know. How, how much more overactive would you like me to be yeah. that I drive you all crazy? Like, come on, let's get this done. Let's do this. You know, from yeah. laying in a bed years ago when you can't function. And my husband would say, there are two things you will do. Have dinner done and have laundry done. And I thought, oh my God, I have to go down yeah. solo with the laundry. I'm mm -hmm. lucky if I go back and get it tomorrow. All right, well, if I die down here, I hope they find me. I know you sound like me. <laughs> That's what I used to, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to die. I just can't even lift a finger. There's no way. It's just so hard. And look at, but I, I, you're making a really good point here though, that you have to take care of your health. And what I found in protracted withdrawal, especially I have to take extra good care of my health. I just do. Like I've been through hell. We're traumatized because of the experience. We're sensitive to things. You learn more about the world and like all the chemicals around you. And like, I just choose not to partake in that kind of stuff. So 
I just have to take extra good care of my, I need sleep all the time. I turn my phone off on the weekends. I have to, or I cannot function in this world. You know, I know mine, the calls start early in the morning. They're going all the time. You know, now, you know, people can just reach you at any time and I need to concentrate on my family. So when my brother had his son and now I'm raising a baby, my kids actually say to me, don't do to him what you did to us because I could be sitting with them. And if a fence or prison call, I was gone and gave them my time. Don't do it. And yeah. they'll don't do to him. And I never did. So even when he went to school, I'm like, you call me during the school time. Don't call me when he's home. So he didn't see a lot of that because he lived with us. So we have to protect our health. We do have to do that. And, you know, with any one of us would do anything to help somebody else, you know? Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. we put ourselves out there. We're both in the films. And I think the films will do a lot of good. I mean, they're doing a lot of good. I and so. you know, they they put their, 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 their blood and sweat into these movies. We mm-hmm. put our lives out there. You know, yeah. and I like that you said, in it that you had to keep doing it because then you can't kill yourselves you have to keep going i was like no i can't be in a movie and they show like half my life and then they put the little black the the black screen at the end was such a great person by suicide i was like no that's not gonna happen i gotta stay alive it's hard though it was hard how many years off are you right now Uh, seven and a half seven and a half okay so and if you have without spending a lot of money if you have poor liver function so think about it i'm 11 years when I finally find out like I can actually see what's going on. And I mean, for me, what a difference is I helped my body to get rid of that. And I don't believe anybody should do a liver cleanse. I think that's one of the most dangerous things. You I can actually do. tried. I tried some dandelion tea with some, I don't know. I have some kind of weird tea and I was taking it and I'm telling you, I felt so sick. I was like, uh, uh-uh, I yeah. can't do this. And I, and then believe it or not, like I stopped the supplement really quick. This is like last summer, last July. And then like a week later I got COVID. Oh, that was like, Oh, it was the worst week ever, (laughs) but it was, it was fine. But I got this poop test. I am going to do this poop test. Yeah. I I don't know what it is, but which one is that one? I don't even know. Some doctor gave it to me for free. He said, I want to help you. We know how they are. Some yeah. doctors are actually nice. He's like, I want to help you. Let's look at your gut health. Comprehensive stool analysis and okay. parasitology, CSAP. Yeah, I've I done know. that. I'll start there. And that's, we'll what, that's what just showed how bad my gut was again. Like I'm thinking, was it ever fully healed? Because I think most of us, as we start to get better, we just kind of, well, you have no choice. I know just you just, you going. just like, yeah, you just keep, you just slide back into life. You don't really keep working on things. Yeah. But I've told people is if you can tell me you're better, do not go back to work for six months. I'm pretty firm on that. Give yourself six months. And the only reason I say that, I have seen so many when they're better, like they go running back into life. They are out and they're doing this and they stop guilty. drinking. I'm guilty, but I didn't drink. I just, I didn't really, I went through school. Then I helped the film for t- three years and then I went to my own business. So I didn't really take break. I didn't. But your body's kind of used that though right yeah well, I felt like I had to like my symptoms were so bad that I had to keep distracted and doing something or I was right. going to lose it I just yeah. felt like I was going to lose that's it that's okay you know? so I think you're going to find out that test will, will give you a gut test but it won't tell what the liver is doing but you know again in different foods that we can eat can assist so even for that like milk thistle tea or dandelion tea I, I would tell somebody dip it in for five, 10 seconds take it out so that's how yeah. slow I would go yeah. Everything we do should be slow because if not, you're going to feel what you felt because oh, yeah. it, it is like going to help. Uh, and then it's, then it's going to push it out and you can't get rid of it. Yeah. And, you know, Dr. Mm-hmm. Pert used to say, we all have to talk about bowel health. Your bowels have to be moving. They have to be moving. Yeah. So I think that's important. So he was important. To say, get, tell people their bowels have to be going because we, yeah. from the drugs, if they're on multiple drugs, they're not going, yeah. they've got to go. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about last two things. Tell us about your podcast and tell us about Coheal Me. Okay. So the podcast, uh, we started back in 2018. My son had been wanting to do them for years, you know, because Garrett meets a lot of the people in at the state house. Mm-hmm. And because my kids don't like people calling the house, they'll call it any time, any day. He's like, if you just do this, I hear you saying the same thing over and over. So we <laughs> finally start, we put four out there. And then my husband gets the first cancer. And so literally he's diagnosed with a Merkel cell carcinoma. And then I think within a month we find out he has leukemia. And then we've got to move my daughter's wedding up, get her married in 10 days because he's going to be gone. Like it was crazy. We, right. We're gone for a year. <laughs> so 
we're, we're concentrating on him. So the podcast, what I wanted to do was bring these stories of hope, you know, because what's the one thing everybody wants? They want to hear over and over and over again. So I try, I brought Millie Key from the UK who started, she has april.org.uk. I brought her on, we, you know, bring in some, doc. we had Steve Wright, we just had Dr. Joseph Wood Deering. I tried to bring some people that were so sick that, you know, some of them are from years ago, but people thought, okay, I'm no the sick. Yeah. So yeah. that you can hear, they, she, this one recovers, has two more children. Okay, this one becomes a nurse, has four more, four more children. It's constant encouragement. Somebody sent me a message from Australia saying, I drive around listening to the podcast all the time. And that's what you want. So right now we're going to take a break for the summer. We didn't do them. You know, I was gone a lot this year in Florida while my mother was sick. And um, so as soon as we got back, you know, I try to do a recap show following, you know, people each year. And now we won't do Ken anymore. He's healthy. He was put on for COVID two weeks on Ativan, turned his life upside down. Yeah. Melly, she's good. We, we won't follow her anymore. So I yeah. think it's just good to have the podcast. We're not great yeah. technologically wise. I'm real bad. It's Garrett, fine. Knows you know, we're just not yeah. good about pushing them out there. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted everything for free for people to listen to. You know, exactly. just that's we don't. Yeah, that's why I do these interviews, and that's why I do the YouTube channel. That's my. Con- that's yeah. I don't. I don't understand the podcast thing. I wish yeah. I did, but so I just. I do, well, we don't do audio. We do audio. We don't do mm. visual, which. He's like, well, maybe we should switch to that because we're upstairs in my closet where yeah. my, it's we joke that we're in the closet with all of Joe's old suits and clothes because it's <laughs> nice and soundproof. It's um, up, yeah. and people saw it. We're like, you know, and then we think about going, um, you know, visual, but some people are like, I don't want to be seen. They don't watch it really. I think that most people just listen. I know I listened. I couldn't handle the screen thing. Yeah. No, I don't know. A lot of times, like if I'm listening, I'll put it in, I'll walk around, do work, but I'm listening. So we yes, just, me too. Let's keep it. Let's just keep it to to audio and, do what um, you can all right so now the last thing co-heal me what is this what so is this? co-heal me they're going to actually kind of change what they're doing and i i actually was just talking to uh so sarah and rachel are in israel mm-hmm. um and sarah's the one that was harmed by these drugs so i think they want to start doing something a little differently but you know i'll be one of the coaches i never wanted to do that Money. but and i should have waited till september like after like my sister's coming I, you know leanne had the baby but mm-hmm. I think it's good sometimes to talk to a coach because these groups are getting scary. I mean, they are getting very scary, the bad advice out there. And I think you need positivity more than anything else. So when somebody, you know, books an appointment with me, I actually start asking a lot more questions. I think that most people would ask. Yes. And I, and and because I just did this when I was uh, interviewing Joseph with Daring, because we've learned over the years, there are people that don't sweat. Some of them lost the ability to sweat because of benzos some Mm -hmm. didn't before but there are a lot because it affects the whole endocrine system they don't sweat that is not healthy the body is supposed to sweat so even one of my moderators i said seven years she's still sick lives in florida you don't sweat it's weird no yeah so her son started to take her down to the beach when he got home to put her feet in the water that's how it all started she would put her feet in the water sit out in the sun she have a little spray bottle and she finally gets her body to start sweating. I mm-hmm. went with my cousin, we got like a one week free thing to go, we go steam. You know, I was sweating, but I wanted to sweat more. And I didn't know my cousin didn't sweat. So that got her feeling better. So you don't have to go do all this. There are ways to get your body to sweat again. Stop with your feet next and salt pot. But yeah. we, the non-sweaters were sicker. So I asked that. I also want to know if you have a gallbladder. If you don't have a gallbladder, I feel you absolutely should be taking a digestive enzyme with ox bile. So no gallbladder, you have to have ox bile. Both of my kids don't have gallbladders now. They are both taking digestive enzymes with ox bile so that they don't have issues because we know some people wound up in the groups from having their gallbladders out. Mm -hmm. I want to know if they're drinking. You know, I want to know, are you sedentary all day? So I want all that kind of done before they meet with me so I'm not wasting their time. Then we just kind of go over. I won't give tapering advice, but we'll go over what do you feel comfortable with? I mean, we're not supposed to give tapering advice. We're listening. It's a guide. And let's go back to Heather Ashton. It was always to be a guide. She wanted the person in charge. I don't know that person's life, the stress, you know, do you have support? I don't feel anybody should go out and start exercising a lot. Like even with a supplement, start slow, 
Everything mm-hmm. we do has to be slow because if you are a poor detoxifier, you go out and start exercising, you are going to get so sick, which happened to me. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't exercise for years and I had to start slow. So everything we do is cautious. Yeah, I, I did too. It was very slow working my way up to walking. Yeah. Even, even I would last summer, I was like, I can only walk like one mile and I have to turn around and come back. And that was it. And then it was like, okay, let me try a mile and a half. And then it was too much. Now I can, I just hiked like four miles last night and I wanted wow. more. I was like, come on, yeah. I need more. I need like two more. <laughs> and when you're yeah. doing that, are you sweating a lot? Yeah. I, I just, it's funny you bring that up because I noticed, I think it was like a year ago. I was at the gym, just doing like little mild stuff with the machines. And I was like, oh my God, my back is sweating. Like, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I felt like sweat going down my back. Wow. It was, yeah, it was a long time. Yeah. Before I, I mean, really our did. skin is our biggest detoxification agent, mm-hmm. you know, our organs. So why wouldn't we use it? You know, yeah. Yeah. and if nothing should, we've all lost so much money in this, you know, it's ripped uh, a hole in our lives. And I, I get upset about marriages that are destroyed relationships Families, with parents, with kids, which is yeah. why Garrett and I do it together to see, you know, you know, mm-hmm. we went through a lot. He, you know, there luckily because I could cook. I still had a cook back then. All the kids came to our house. They would think I was a normal mom. Little do they know, like, oh, my God. I couldn't I see you, how you felt inside. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of uh, my daughter's friends all became nurses. And it's funny. We were at a party one night and somebody said something like, oh, Lena's mom was always right all those years because I would talk to the girls. Don't, you know, don't ever go on the pill. Don't because look how many girls wind up in these groups. Yes. They went on the pill. Yep. Don't be drinking. Don't do this. Like every time I'd give them a lecture. Right. And so <laughs> Lena looks and goes, don't tell my mom she was right all those years. And she goes, but she was. And this particular girl who was a nurse, she was contacting us frantically one night. And so finally, you know, Leanna calls her back and she goes, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to, I want to talk to your mom. She'd just been given a prescription for Ativan, a young girl, and her mom had a big position at Brigham Women's Hospital. I go down to the house, give them the ASHA manual. She goes through it, goes in and talks to the top doctor who's in charge of side effects, drug side effects, who wouldn't speak to me. She goes barrel acid in there with the ASHA manual and said, why would my daughter be put on this? So we know he's seen the ASHA manual. I don't think he had much to say. So she never want, went on it. And I said to her, you know, you're drinking, you're smoking pot. We're going to get you off all that. You're going to start eating better. She now has two children. She's such a super mom now, you know, Normal. like that's all she yeah. needed. Yeah. But she was wow. given out of it. And, you know, so we know there are benzo babies. You have to be very careful. You don't want these young girls on that, which again, brings us back to why I'm so adamant about women and the effect it has on our menstrual cycle. It just bothers me how many women have lost, they've aged out, or they can only have one. Or in my case, I had two. Mm-hmm. I wanted more. It's just not right what has happened. That they're not paying attention. I've tried to bring it to the limelight, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I this is what I always like to end on hope. So what hope can you share for people? So watching? I have seen a lot. I, I'm gonna tell you, and this I hope gives the best hope. The two that I actually thought they would die, they were so sick, so healthy. Like you, like one couldn't even drink water without a reaction. So to me, that's somebody, his body is reacting to everything and both got very healthy, you know? So one ate meticulous, the other one didn't. How crazy is that? You just have to give your body, I think what it needs to heal. And for each of us, it's going to be something different, but I have seen some of the sickest of the sick get better. And here I am all these years later, when I was the young one calling over the UK, looking for hope, you know, and now they've all retired or gone. And you know, now I've, I'm the old one. And that's all, that's, that's all we can do is give that hope is free. And, mm-hmm. and we, we just have to give that constantly. And if we could tell people anything is please, please just do something to calm your nervous system as you're going through this, protect yourself from bad stories, which is why we only want to bring the good stories. You know, I don't want somebody listening to a horror story. I don't like horror movies. So why in these groups, when we did them years ago, we had, we can only do it by writing your success stories as you left the groups and people get mad that people have left. Why? They need to go have their lives. Some of us are sticking around and that's okay. Go have your life. So, and then if I, you know, like I would say, I'm like the Godfather. If I need you someday, I will call you and ask you to talk to someone, you know, you'll do the same thing, you know? Yeah. 
Oh, well, all awesome. Right. Well, thank you so much, Geraldine, uh, for all your contributions all right. to this movement. Hopefully you'll come back into Boston again sometime. Yeah, we'll be there. I'm going to be on the East Coast for a week next week in like two weeks from now, but I'm not by Boston, darn it. But I'll no. get there. I'll get back. Well, You'll my see. sister's coming in town, but hey, you know, you can I'll always call me. I'll get back. Right. For, I'll come back from some, from, for some, what is it? Tubule? How do you say it? Oh, tabouleh. Tabouleh. God, tabule. I can't and, say and it. And it's gluten-free. I, instead of making it with butigo, which they call bulga, I make it with quinoa so that oh, it was good. gluten-free and nobody can tell the difference. Delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. Oh, yeah. I did, we right. did that. Too. It was so good. Thank you All so right. much. Thank okay. you for everybody for watching. All everybody right. have a good weekend. See you later. Bye. Bye.